Hello guys. Welcome again to CS Core and Network Fundamentals course. In the previous lecture we learned what is the core and its different types depending on the generation, whether it is 2G, 3G, or 4G. We said in 2G, 3G networks, they are using two core networks which are circuit switched networks and packet switched networks. In this course till the end of the lectures we are going to focus on the circuit switched networks. Let's start our lecture now, Layered Network Architecture. This chapter describes the network layers that are in the core network. OK. Upon completion of this lecture you will be able to Describe the concept of vertically and horizontally integrated networks. You will be able to explain the differences between them and determines which networks we are using in current mobile networks. In mobile networks, we have two types of it, whether it is vertical integrated network or horizontal integrated networks. In the past most of the mobile operators were using the vertical integrated model, but currently due to a major change for modern telecommunications networks has been the shift from a vertically integrated network model to a horizontally integrated network model. There is a push to migrate all telecommunication networks to a horizontal layered model, which already happened now. Let's know the difference between both of them. First we will start with the vertical integrated networks. Vertically integrated networks are optimized for a particular service category and usually offers a single service. This means that you can offer a single service while using vertical networks. Like PLMN and vertical networks was designed to make a single service which is voice calls. PSTN public switch telephone networks was designed to make landline calls. IP networks designed to provide interface with the internet and so on. You will find out each network from those has its own connectivity nodes, control nodes, application services nodes. Don't worry we will explain each of these nodes in details in the upcoming lectures. So, since each of these networks has its own nodes, therefore they are offering just single service. That means the PLMN can't make voice calls and internet browsing at the same time, as it has no connection with IP networks. That was the bad thing in the vertical networks. But the good thing about it was, since vertically integrated networks need only support a limited range of closely related services, it is relatively easy to ensure reliability and to meet customer expectations in terms of service quality. But the evolution to vertical networks was mandatory to provide multiple service at the same time. So, new integration to vertical networks is done, this approach is called horizontal networks. Let's now talk about the horizontal networks. In the horizontally integrated network model, each layer provides a particular function independent of other layers. This means that horizontal networks are not network independent but they are layer independent. By another meaning, the mobile operator can now have the connectivity, control, application layers, which contains the nodes that enables it to connect to PLMN, PSTN, IP network or CAT networks at the same time. So that a subscriber in a mobile operator can make voice calls and browse the internet or even calls a PSTN landline number. So the difference done here is that we made three layers, which are connectivity layer, control layer, and application layer. Each layer of this have the nodes that enables any network to do multiple services, not just a single one. Also the benefit from the horizontal networks is to simplify backbone network design and enable incremental upgrade as new technologies are commercialized. To simplify the understanding of horizontal networks, let's have a look at this picture. But first we need to know the difference between the control plane and user plane. Control plane carries signaling messages between the network nodes Signaling messages means the procedures done before making a certain service, like the call setup before the call is connected. All the network nodes that passes the signaling messages between each other is considered control plane. The user plane carries the user data, like the actual call between two subscribers. 
From the picture, you will see the dotted line is where signaling messages passes. Accordingly, you will find the network control layer, and the application layer is from the control plane. While connectivity layer with normal line not dotted is user plane. So, back again to our lecture. You will find here the three independent layers we talked about, connectivity control and application layer. You will also find access networks like Jaren, which is 2G access networks, UTRAN, which is 3G access networks, PRA, which is used for voice calls only. So, let's give an example. A 2G subscriber can make voice call using the control plane MSC node in it for call setup procedures and user plane media gateway to carry user plane traffic to PLMN network. And of course we'll use the application charging node to charge for his call. Also same user can make data sessions with internet using control plane SGSN node to set up a connection and using user plane node GGSN for carrying user plane traffic. So we can see here we used more than one service at the same network. This is what we mean with horizontal networks. In briefly we can say that. The connectivity layer is the layer which provides transport functionality. The key nodes located in the connectivity layer are the media gateways and GGSN. The control layer is the layer which provides control functionality and consists of various control servers that control the media gateways. The key nodes located in control layer is MSC, HLR, and SGSN. The services or application layer, it is the layer which provides services and applications via application servers and service capability servers. Don't worry, we will discuss the role of each node in the upcoming chapters. Hope at the end of this lecture, you are now able to explain the concept of vertical and horizontal networks and the differences between them. See you in the next chapter.